Ahead on Daytime Buffalo, giving power to the people. We've got the minds behind the 716 nonprofit that aims to provide a reliable means for transportation to those making Buffalo their new home. And I sit down with the animal expert from Club Posh about a new virus affecting dogs across the country. It's all coming up right here on Daytime Buffalo. Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to Daytime Buffalo. I'm your host, Chelsea Lavelle. Joining me now in the Daytime Buffalo studio is John Hannon, Dave Stockings, and John Amon of Wheels for Workers 716, and Andrea Camerata from Journeys End. Thank you all for joining me. Well, Good morning. You. Okay, so first off, I'll let you start, John. Tell me about Wheels for Workers and how you got started. Okay, so Wheels, <coughs> Wheels for Workers is a all-volunteer group. We get donated bicycles, anywhere from uh, the police departments to trash to wherever we can find them. Volunteers rebuild them and then we donate them to people that need a bike to get transportation to school, to work, to get food. So we're working with people that don't have any other choice and it's, it's kind of a game changer. Absolutely, because you're working with a lot of people, both volunteers and people that are getting the bikes, right? Uh, people who have recently come to Buffalo. Yes. From other parts of the world. Yes. And we also work with people that were born and raised in Buffalo mm -hmm. that are just in a position where they don't have transportation and they need to work. Uh, now, where does Journeys End come in part of play? Well, I met John a couple years ago, and um, it's been a beautiful relationship with Wheels for Workers. We're so fortunate to be in this Western New York community that is so welcoming to the refugee population. And um, as John mentioned, you know, refugees, um, when they first arrive, they need to get to work, they need to get to school, they need to learn English, uh, go shopping. So the bicycles give them an opportunity to navigate their new community. And how long have you guys been involved with Wheels for Workers? Well, I've been involved since we started a year and a half ago. Okay. And I had retired from Moog after 38 years, was looking for some way to get involved with charitable work. John said, you know about repairing bicycles, don't you? And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> he said, well, you're an engineer, you can learn it. Yeah. And now a year and a half later, I actually know enough to be dangerous. So wow, okay. It, it's been really rewarding. Yeah, why was it so important for you to start something like this, John? Well, in my last career, uh, we hired 50 employees from Journey's End. Okay. And that business was successful because of those employees. Mm -hmm. And somebody came along and acquired the business from us. Suddenly, I didn't have anything to do again. So this was a great way to give back and help that population that really helped us. Recently, you guys have been able to commemorate something super special. You've made your 1,000th bike, right? Tell me about that. Well, <clears throat> since the spring, one of our guys is... Uh, we're going to do a thousand this year. We're going to do a thousand this year. And he's like the Energizer Bunny. His name's Anthony. <laughs> and so we're working, and they put up a little system where we count and log bikes in. So we know we're getting close. And uh, we challenged ourselves to do it. <clears throat> and there's so much demand mm -hmm. that we're rewarded every time we bring bikes to Journey's End. The caseworkers come out with post-it notes, and they <laughs> already have a name of a person that's waiting for a bike to get to work. Oh, wow. So, <clears throat> so the thousand was like a really really big goal mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're past it you know yeah. we're, we're really uh, amazed now you are also celebrating something that you guys are recently working on a project to give back to elementary students and giving bikes for Christmas correct yes tell yes. me about that my son and daughter-in-law started a foundation called Noah's Helping Hands in honor of our grandson and um, they do things in the schools for families that don't have gifts and tops gift cards and things like that and this year they said could you guys do some bikes for us so back in july we started collecting the bikes that came in that were pretty nice they weren't rusty we got a place that they would let us store them out of the weather so those bikes are all now coming out and we're polishing them up putting air in the tires and getting those ready so those will be donated to these families in two weeks. Okay. So that's our next big goal is to get these 60 bikes ready. 60 bikes having ready for the holidays. Yeah. Now on average, about how long does it take to get these bikes road ready? I'd say we're around four hours yeah. per bike. It's getting better as the quality <laughs> of bikes gets better, is improving that we're receiving. So uh, it's a very thorough job mm -hmm. though that, uh, mm -hmm. that you, all, you all do. And how long have you been involved from the beginning too? Just six months. Okay, um, nice. I retired uh, 31 years in family court uh, at the end of May, and I was looking for something meaningful to get back to the community. And uh, I wandered into 
Wheels for Workers, and <laughs> it's just great on so many levels. I can learn a skill, and I, I too, start, just you know, can change a tire. Now I'm learning how to work a little bit uh, more in depth on these bikes, but uh, it's wonderful camaraderie. These are good people wanting to do good things. They're, they want to sh share their passion with you. And uh, we're doing other things too. I got a chance to help deliver 100 meals to uh, uh, refugees at an extended day in, day in, uh, in uh, the day before Thanksgiving, for instance. Wow. Our mission is, is just expanding and I'm, it's great to be a part of that. About how many volunteers do you guys have working? About 36. Okay. And uh, any, you know, some are still working. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a, a person who works for the FBI that volunteers for us. <laughs> wow. So it's pretty cool. And a DEC uh, engineer. So a lot of different backgrounds. And that's part of the beauty of working together. Mm -hmm. We learn from each other. We tell stories. Yeah. And um, the, the focus is, you know, we're going to help some people today. Mm -hmm. So how can someone get involved with you guys if they're like, I have time on my hands, I would love to be involved with this amazing project? So uh, we will train anybody to be a mechanic or whatever their skill set is, we can use it. Mm -hmm. you know, so whether it's the website or, or Facebook, picking up bikes is always really important. Mm -hmm. uh, relationships in the community, you know, bike drives either at your place of employment or your church or your health club. All of those things are huge contributions because we don't sell anything. We don't have any income. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't pay anybody, but we have to at least buy parts. Mm -hmm. And so the volunteers are key. So if, if a person is interested, they can go to our website or call our brand new phone number. Do you have that? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. Well, do you want to say it? <laughs> if not, we'll put it on the website. We got it. <laughs> okay, we do have the number. We have the number. <laughs> Haven't memorized that yet. Yeah. 716 218 8543. I'll say it slower. There you go. Two one eight eight five four three. If you let us know you would like to volunteer, we'll get back to you and uh, become part of the crew. All righty. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Uh, like John said, you can learn more about Wheels for Workers by, uh, 716 by calling them at 716-218-8543 or over on their Facebook and, of course, on their website, wheelsforworkers.org. Thanks again for coming in. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much.